I'm fascinated with this study because it's not only fantastically flawed, but it's also absolutely unbelievably misinterpreted. So let's dig deeper because it is important to see what the study is doing, what kind of research methods they used, and how we can use the data from this study to see whether the masks are effective or not. Hello, I'm Dr. Sam, this is Dr. Sam's Health, and today we're going to talk about masks again. I've already made two videos about them, but I've got a couple of reasons to make the third one today. First and foremost, we never spoke about the effectiveness of masks. I spoke about the way they work, the electrostatic forces, the filtration forces, and so on, but we never reviewed the evidence that is supporting or not supporting their effectiveness in terms of getting, contracting COVID or coronavirus in general or not. There were quite a few experts talking about the masks positively or negatively. There were quite a few celebrities talking about them, vouching for them, advocating for them, or the opposite. They were saying that masks are completely ineffective. And as far as I remember, even the United States President, Donald Trump, spoke about a CDC study and uh, my guess is that he misquoted it. He said that even CDC showed that 70% of people who wear masks get the virus. And uh, today I would like to focus specifically on this, not on this quote, but on this study, because Donald Trump clearly misinterpreted or misrepresented this study, but I don't blame him because he's not a statistician and not a public health expert. Likely he misunderstood what was communicated to him. There were quite a few, unfortunately, experts who were making very similar misinterpretation of this study. So I dug the study out and I'm going to do some stats uh, based on this study and some other research uh, items that we can find on the internet. And today we're going to do real statistics in real time and I will try to show you what the science says about the effectiveness of the masks. As always, before we begin, I have to make a couple of disclaimers. First of all, I'm a medical doctor, I'm a practicing physician, but nothing I talk about in my videos or in my blog at drsamshealth.com, please check it out, should be considered medical advice. It's just merely my opinion, and it is an opinion of mine. It's not a representation of whatever the opinion or official statements of my regulatory bodies, my colleges, my universities, are, it's just literally my opinion that I present for educational or more likely for entertainment purposes. Now when we're done with the disclaimers, let's talk about this study. First of all, I was very surprised with Donald Trump saying that 70% of people who wear masks get the virus, which is simply not true and it doesn't even make sense. But what likely happened is that he misinterpreted the uh, thing that was communicated to him from the study. So there was a CDC study that has taken quite a few people, divided them into two categories. One of them was uh, people who are symptomatic and positive for coronavirus. And they asked them how many of them were wearing masks. Uh, and 71% of them, indeed, that's a scientific fact, reported that they wore masks always or almost always. And here I would like to point out that there is a huge difference between 70% who wear masks get the virus and what was communicated in this study, which was 71% of those who got the virus wore the masks. It's an absolutely different statistic, and uh, I'll show you how we can work with that in order to see whether the masks are effective or not. Anyhow, as soon as I learned about this quote and this study, I had to dig it up and to take a closer look at the study. And as I said, the study indeed reported that 71% of people who tested positive for the virus were wearing masks and 74% of those who tested negative for the virus uh, were also wearing masks always or almost always. So from some sort of a superficial standpoint, if you just take a quick look at the study, you will feel that the masks are not effective which is not the case. As a matter of fact, I'm fascinated with this study because it's not only fantastically flawed, but it's also absolutely unbelievably misinterpreted. So let's dig deeper because it is important to see what the study is 
doing, what kind of research methods they used, and how we can use the data from this study to see whether the masks are effective or not. My first concern with this study was that if you take a look at the numbers, they had a group of cases and group of controls, and they were almost equal, meaning that they had 154 uh, cases and 160 controls, so vice versa. But the key point is that they had two groups of people who were randomly selected, and out of this people, half tested positive for the virus and half tested negative, which is statistically impossible. If you take a general population with the you know, expected prevalence of the seropositivity or positivity for the virus of around 10%, there is no way you can randomly select a group of people that would be would have like 50-50 distribution of people who are positive and negative. So something was off. And when I'm saying something was off, the whole design of the study was interesting. If we dig deeper, we'll see there was almost nothing random about their selection process. And let's look at that in detail. First of all, they have found approximately 600 people who tested positive for the virus during the month of July 2020, and they have found 1,200 people, like double the amount of these uh, cases, who tested negatively for the virus. So they were serop negative, and the cases were seropositive. Out of this 1,600 plus cases and controls, uh, they have called approximately 800 people, half of them, I don't know why, by the way, but they ended up with having some data for 800 people. And the data were pretty much some questionnaires, and the main question of interest for us is obviously the liquor scale uh, related to the mask wearing. And the most important question was how often were you wearing masks in the past couple of weeks? Prior to, prior to the test, and the answer we're looking for was always or almost always. Some people might argue that it's a questionable outcome, but we know from statistics that, generally speaking, these answers are usually more or less valid. So, the key issue with the selection process is not that. The key issue is that they have called only half of the people, and then out of this half of the people, they had approximately 300 people in one cohort and 550 in another, the controls, they have selected patients who were symptomatic and who were willing to participate in the study. So somehow they ended up with 154 people who tested positive for the virus and they were symptomatic and, attention, they had controls, 160 controls who were symptomatic but negative for the virus. And that pretty much makes their control group not really a control group and I am not sure if we can trust the, any kind of data from the control group. But the good thing is that we can trust the data on mask wearing from the cases group. So they had number of patients, 154, and 71% of them reported wearing masks always or almost always in the two-week period preceding the test. So these are the data we can actually trust, and they sound realistic. What can we do with this data? How can we answer our question, which would be, are masks effective or not? How can we statistically test it? The statistical question would be, are your chances of contracting the virus higher or lower if you're wearing a mask versus not wearing a mask? And quite frankly, we cannot answer this question with the data from this study alone. Just because, as we could see, the data on controls is very skewed, biased, we shouldn't use this data. But we can answer this question using something that is called confusion matrix. I will show you exactly how it works. There is a huge theoretical framework behind that, but I don't want to bore you to death. I will just show you on my laptop and in an Excel spreadsheet how we can use the data from this study and a couple of other studies in order to answer our statistical question. So let's dig in. As I said, I don't want to make a long, boring video. I will make a short illustration of how these matrices work. So essentially we've got a two by two table and here we'll have a table that has people who are wearing masks and people who are not wearing masks and people who are tested positive and negative. And accordingly we will have marginals that will have sums of the lines in case of testing positive and negative and sums of the rows 
that have people wearing masks and not wearing masks. So the, I will start with a hypothetical sample of 1,000 people. So for example, if we got 1,000 subjects that were randomly selected from the general population, we will get the following distribution. So we know that 71% of cases wore masks. Also, we can check the statistics online. I will show you where I got my data from. We know that 85% of people wear masks in general or wore masks approximately at this time uh, in the United States. So we can start with that. And the 10% were positive in July when they were tested. So let's try to fill out this table using the data that we have. First of all, masks versus no masks. We'll start with marginals because that's what we have. You have 1,000 people randomly selected. We'll know that 85% of these people will wear masks, right? So that's what we do. 1,000 times 85% is 850 subjects. And accordingly, uh, the rest here, 15%, will be people who are not wearing masks. Then we can go to the marginals for the testing positive and negative. We know that 10% approximately were positive in July. So what we get here is the test positive. So out of 1,000, if we randomly select them, approximately 100 people would test positive and 900 people would test negative. And now when we get marginals, we can actually try working with the inside of this two by two table. So first of all, we know that 71% of cases wore masks in this CDC study, right? So we can calculate it by multiplying the number of people who tested positive by 71%, exactly the way it was described in the study. And accordingly, the difference between all of them and those who tested, uh, who wore masks will be people who, were, who tested positives who tested positive and were not wearing masks. The next thing is to calculate people who were tested negative. And uh, as I said, we cannot really use the data from the study because it was not particularly good. But what we should do is we can just simply calculate these numbers using our marginals that are based on the data from other studies. So we can calculate the uh, number of people who were wearing masks uh, and we know that 71 per, uh, of 850 people who were wearing masks tested positive. And accordingly, the difference between these numbers will be people who were tested negative. So here we got this result. And here we got the similar parameter for uh, people who were tested negatively and were not wearing masks. And accordingly, we can calculate two things. And I will show you this. First of all, it's a cross-sectional study effectively, so we should not use uh, relative risks because they are made or used with prospective studies, but I will do both risks and odds ratios. The reason why I'm doing so is because risk ratio is a very appropriate, very intuitive uh, parameter or statistic that we can calculate, and odds ratio is the proper one, but First of all, it's closely related to the risk ratio, depending on the prevalence in the population and so on. And also, it is not very intuitive, but I will calculate both. So what we can see here is that the risk of testing positive if you're wearing a mask is 8%, and the risk of testing positive if you're not wearing a mask is 19%, which gives us a risk ratio of 2.3, which pretty much means that if you are not wearing a mask, you are 2.3 times more likely to test positive for the virus. And we can do pretty much the same with odds. Again, they are not very intuitive, but this odds of 0 0.09 means that there is approximately one to 11 odds of testing positive if you are wearing a mask and approximately one to four or five, one to four, uh, if you are not wearing a mask. And we can calculate the odds ratio, which will be notably very close to the risk ratio. And the odds ratio is 2.63. So again, it's 
if you are not wearing a mask, you are 2.6 times more likely to test positive. And that, in my opinion, is the proper way of statistical interpretation of the data that we got from this study. We have taken a closer look at this study, we have extracted the data that were valid and reliable, and we have put this data into the context of other research that was done in this area. And my final conclusion is that if you are not wearing a mask, you are two plus times more likely to contract the virus in comparison to those people who choose to wear masks. And just one nerdy detail about the statistics I was quoting, some people might argue that I should interpret the odds ratio the other way around. It's not the risk of contracting the virus, it's the risk of wearing the mask. For those of you who are at this level of their development of understanding of statistics, please check out the Bayes theorem and you will see that actually it works both ways. In any case, I would like to wrap up this video by highlighting the fact that this study was completely misinterpreted and has been taken out of the context. When we put it back into the context and when we are properly interpreting the data, we see that you're much more likely to contract the virus if you are not wearing a mask. And once again, I would like to emphasize that this study was not just misinterpreted. It was also designed in a very funny way. I personally have no idea why they chose to pick people who are symptomatic but seronegative for this virus as a control group because it kind of invalidates lots of aspects of the study. But still, we managed to go through the data and to interpret it properly, in my opinion. Effectively, this study is a great reminder that we should always rely on proper statistical methodology. And ideally, we should always run some sort of a randomized control trial and uh, I don't have much time for that today, but there was a randomized controlled trial of masks that was just published literally days ago. I will add the link to this study. It was done in Denmark. And it appears to be somewhat controversial because there are apparently lots of criticisms, uh, even coming from statisticians and epidemiologists. But I honestly don't feel like I should talk about this study in great detail right now because I've already discussed one study and I've, this video is already getting pretty long. Maybe I will discuss this Danish study in one of my next videos. I just wanted to draw your attention to the fact that there is at least one big study like that and if you are interested in this kind of research you should definitely check it out. Also, if you haven't subscribed yet, you should subscribe to my channel and please check out my website drsamshealth.com and that's pretty much it for today. If you like my videos, hit the like button, hit the notification bell, leave comments, ask questions. I'm always happy to interact with you in any way possible. And I really appreciate you watching my videos and being my subscribers. Thank you so much. All the best.